Um, this is an, an energy shell that is trying to utilize birthing ritual and Springheart and Tuco as value engines that you don't get access to when you're not playing green in your energy deck. Um, birthing ritual is been a card you see in some combo decks, but here it is mostly just a value card. And what's cool about this deck too is with birthing ritual, you can sack tokens that you make from Ocelot Pride or Springheart and Tuco to try to hit some of your really powerful one mana spells. Uh, additionally, uh, White Orchid Phantom is very good to sack into your threes, and you can also kind of sack anything into a Renegade Rallyer and bring it back. Now, unlike last time, we're playing Eternal Witness and trying to like loop Eternal Witness Ephemerate alongside Ranger Captain Solitude, Witch Enchanter, White Orchid Phantom to close out games in the late game. Um, we weren't playing the Witnesses before. I think they are a nice upgrade. And of course, we are also Ranger Captain looping um, some opponents game one. Why no one of Kitchen Finks? Unfortunately, and you know this, Kitchen Finks is a completely unplayable modern card, unless the new combo comes to complement it. Alright, keep this. Hopefully Solitude Ephemerate is effective against them. No need of Collector Oof since you have Haywire. Yeah, I don't think you need Oof. Like, I think Teague is better against Tron. Um... And you have a bunch of Witch Enchanters in the main, so you need, like, d less Disenchants. I don't, I'm not even sure, like, what you would really want to be targeting with that, to be honest. You think Esper Control, which replaces Flage with Shieldred from Jessica Controllus, could work in Modern? Uh, like, Demir Ring has been a deck that has been kind of, like, you know, waxed and waned, and it's viability, playability, all this. And um, I, I, do, I do think that you could be Esper in that, arc, in that shell. All right, keep a uh, keep an onslaught pride, I guess. I think I am just gonna go ahead and play a ritual here, though. Why is Renafell better than Pick Your Poison? Well, I, at least against Psychic Frog, like you can never pick your poison to kill Psychic Frog because it will never have flying on your turn, or it, I should maybe say it will almost never have flying on your turn. Maybe playing out the Pride is bad against uh, Probable Bowmaster here. But if they just also don't have Bowmaster because their inquiry was awkward, I, I want to have the this in play. What happens if you look with Birthing Writ and don't stack anything, bottom them all? Yes. I've been playing a version of the deck with Sophie Combo it, and it's been pretty good, not going to lie. I don't know. I mean, I don't really want to put Carrion Feeder or... Uh, Altar of Dementia in the deck, but I, I do agree that combos are good, so yeah, maybe. I have also played Safi combo in this kind of shell in the past and usually prefer to just not play it. So they discard their Hollow One, classic. A lot of good top decks here. And some bad ones. Oops, all birthing rituals. Let's surveil with our lush portico, though. I like that birthing ritual doesn't trigger if you don't control a creature. I think that's a pretty nice, a pretty nice feature. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the land on top so I can hard cast a solitude next turn. I don't think that we'll need to evoke solitude here. If we do, we get punished, but it doesn't seem very likely. Safi skim solitude and works well with ritual too. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I I understand, but Safi also just kind of sucks, and it's like it's just not that good of a card. And you also have to play like a shitty sack outlet in your deck, and like these kind of three card combos are slow. You don't have that much way to like tutor them besides the rituals, which is also pretty slow, and it's pretty easy to disrupt if your opponent knows what's going on. That being said, yes, you, you could you could include this in the deck. I agree. Could you have hardcasted Solitude this turn? Uh, no. The Flagstones of Truck here makes the planes you get enter uh, tapped. Could have been better to not surveil in order to hardcast Solitude. No, it's not a, not a viable line still. Although, we can, you can blame Birthing <laughs> uh, burning Cree on this loss, maybe. They also probably should have put this on the Channeler. They just missed three points of damage, which I guess we will... Be happy enough that that happened.
So we next have the Chandler here. Concede to a bolt. Right, out of game. You still prefer Flame Blade over DRC? I mean, I like Flame Blade a lot. I think I do think DRC is good. So I, I guess I should say I'm unsure. I, I, I really am surprised that people are cutting NT for DRC plus Bobble. So it's like minus Flame Blade for DR, minus Flame Blade and NT for DRC plus Bobble. Um, I do like that Bobble grows Nether Goyf, but you already still have artifacts in the deck. But like without NT, I feel like you're missing a little bit of discard enablers. So I, I'm kind of that, that's one thing I, I don't really like about um, the newer lists. Also, I guess I should probably be cutting the Phantoms. Although, flying first strike ain't too bad here. But let's keep the let's keep the witnesses in. I was just got the sanctifiers for Phantoms. I don't think we need to do much else. The link still so small green. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, the uh, was the I didn't update the extension. I think. No, I did. It it looks like both are up to date to me. Maybe refresh. Is Sun Cleanser for energy decks only? Yeah, but there are a lot of energy decks. Yeah, NT also makes you better against like graveyard hate, I agree. So so it's like I I don't really like the idea of of cutting NT and Flame Blade for DRC and Bobble, but I, I could be convinced that like there's a, a way to include DRC. Obviously I'm a big fan of that card. Any world where Rumble and Cash Grab can make a mere retriever list playable again. Um Potentially, I've been I've been working on a mirror retriever list that plays uh glaring flesh raker. That card that card is a card I like a lot. I think the card is great. Um, um but I uh am kind of unsure if we would play more of like a rumble cash grab build. Is burn dead? Well yeah. <laughs> Uh, Burn has a very hard time against the energy decks, and the energy decks are super popular. And I kind of, I kind of don't see B Burn is at least dead right now. I don't really see it being able to make a resurgence anytime soon. Burn has definitely not been a very popular modern deck. Sorry, modern deck for a long time. So they both the ocelot. Good draw. Two bolts and gatekeeper with retriever and eight rumble. Maybe. Seems a little janky, to be honest, but maybe. Been working on the list a little and the biggest thing i'm struggling with is pitchables for ugin's lab yeah i that that's that's where i was at too and then i'm starting to think you just don't play ugin's lab probably which i know feels a bit odd and bad but i, I, I that, that's kind of where i'm at at least Probably gonna win game uh <laughs> game two here. <laughs> also, when you have Bobble in your deck, you have like you're gonna have so many okay, my hand has four street wraiths and and my has two street wraiths and two bobbles. I guess I'm gonna keep and just Oh no. <laughs> I'm dead. Alright, bolt plus surgical. See if my opponent can claw back from this spot. What about Asthma with Rumble? I would, you know, I will say we haven't played against any copies of Wrath of Skies this week, so there may be some hope, but I, I have been not wanting to put the card Asmo in my modern deck uh, for a long time now because of Wrath of Skies. It's kind of disgusting how good the Sanctifier is because then what do they do against that? Yeah, Sanctifier is a great sideboard card right now with Hollow One being on the rise, with Gorio still being popular, and it's also just great against Flage. Um, it's a big advantage of playing green-white is getting access to this card. 
Yeah, I think it's just too good to to sack. But we can maybe find a rallier off another birthing ritual. We also witness back a sanctifier. All right, let's let's do that and get the um the ball rolling, as it were. Kind of bad against another surgical, I guess. Probably be fine. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. I played Sanctum Breaker scores and just went Ulamog. I think that most scores lists are not on Ulamog at the moment. I think it's, I think probably like thirty to forty percent still are playing one Ulamog. Um, I would not I would not recommend an Ulamog, although maybe this is uh, this sounds like Sanctifier propaganda. Thinking of Brendan Green discard your Sanctifier. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's we maybe can't lose if we just keep the Sanctifier. It also kind of doesn't feel like we're going to be losing this game that often in general for whatever that's worth. List that just one was playing one Umog. Yeah, maybe I, maybe I'm wrong about that, but at least at least like I feel like a lot of the lists I saw yesterday weren't playing it. Things are obviously changing a lot too. It's just you know maybe there are just no stock lists. This would be a sad game to lose. All right, well, I have no uh, also pride still in my deck. How does Gora's get cards exiled for Umog? <laughs> Solitude pitch, psychic frog. It is a it is a little dicey, honestly. I'm taking five down to seven. Two cards in their hand. They have a lava dart in the yard. I think I want to go Ranger Captain for guide here. Kind of close. I could maybe hit another Ranger Captain and get a white card in my hand to evoke. Yeah, Hollow One I think is looking really good, I agree. Okay, so I could get Witch Enchanter off the Ranger Captain to kill the Hollow One, and then potentially be able to get a Solitude off the next Birthing Ritual. So no Solitude, but I do see a Ranger Captain that allows me to get a white card in hand. Oh, I could also get Renegade Rallier. So I could Renegade Rally back Guide of Souls. They could have another Surgical. Let's just get Ranger Captain. I don't need another Guide of Souls in play right now. I also don't need to Solitude, but there's there's a chance my opponent goes like double Phoenix, Lava Dart me, and I'll need the Solitude against that. This feels like a punt on Sack of the Sanctifier. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Could definitely buy that it was. We went 3-2 with the mono green deck. So looks like they have a Phoenix. They're bestowing onto the Bowmaster. So I guess I'm going to Solitude to play around Bolt. Go target the Orc Army, I think. So they're going to go up to 6. But we do have 6 points on the backswing here, so if they don't have anything, we... We still get to present lethal. Deck is full of good top decks. Okay, so kind of clearly, I guess we should just go to combat. Present lethal. That if my opponent interacts with me here, I get I get re, I have re, revolt on the rallier. So, do they have the bolt for the ranger captain? Going to game three. Right, I'm going to resubmit. I'm also going to use the rest real quick. Weird that they... Why did they board in all these surgicals against me? It's kind of kind of weird. I'm okay with it, though. Oh, I ain't going to click the mulligan button, I tell you what. Yeah, I haven't tried to... Well, we, we updated Necro in a coffers build yesterday. I didn't love it. Didn't love it. May try to up update Necro in a more normal way. Might not. We'll see. The Spike not play Junless because no one cares because they're bad for both those reasons. Um, I do play Jund. I, in fact, I, I was like at one point known as the Jund guy at the very beginning of my streaming career. Yeah, I'm not gonna not gonna say no to another one. 
Uh, that being said, uh, I, I I have played some recently too. I I had like a kind of more normal Jun list that went pretty poorly, and then I had a Jun Chthonian Nightmare Ruination Rioter deck. And that deck was I thought that deck was pretty nice. Um, I think we four one the one league we played with it. Okay, if my opponent thought seizes my Sanctifier and then Surgicals the Sanctifiers. Uh, good, good, good shit. Honestly, I, you know what? Maybe I'm supposed to solitude in response to avoid that happening. Hmm. If they had it, you would think they would do it main phase for delirium. Black Red Saga. John Black, Black Red Saga, back versus energy. Yeah, I think so. So that, that is kind of, I mean, a reason I think I would not be wanting to play it. If I had a modern RCQ weekend that's coming up, which I could go with. I would, I would play the um, Gruel Woodlands deck. I'm kind of torn between Walking Ballista and Cookbook in the side at the moment. Probably want Walking Ballista to deal with Harbinger a bit more often, but kind of close. So they discard a Hollow One, which is one of their best cards here because it like actually deals with the Sanctifier kind of. Yeah, hopefully we're going to be bestowing to make more Sanctifiers. Now, I don't think that there's a way for them to get Delirium with Sanctifier in play, because they can get Artifact Creature land, but I don't see a way for them to get Enchantment Instant Sorcery uh, in the deck. Yeah, Flame Blade also better against Sanctifier, although that, that shouldn't be like that big of a decision point for this archetype, since you know I'm kind of the only one out here playing Sanctifier, I think. Maybe we could have gone Ranger Captain. I think I just want to start making tokens. And then, like, next turn, there's a good chance I'm going to, like, just copy Sanctifier and play a Birthing Ritual. Yeah, Ghost Flame would get there. <laughs> I found Jun Saga decks to be good against Boros, assuming you play around Moon and Bad versus Martyr Energy. Seems tough to play around Moon. But yeah, maybe that's the case. Have I tried Ugin's Lab Woodlands? Yes. Um, interesting that Graveyard, the Phoenix there. Uh, I have, uh, I've done a few different builds even. I have, I have played Flare of, Flare of Cultivation builds. I have played Aetherworks Marvel builds. I've played builds that are Eldrazi focused. I've, I, I've, I have played a lot of Ugin's Lab um, Shifting Woodlands. Curse you, Basic Forest. Shout out to you, Witch Enchanter. I'm gonna put back the captain, I guess. Could hard evidence in Typhoon be playable in a Flare of Denial shell? You can only sacrifice Dawn Token cards to Flare of Denial. Sorry to break your heart. Actually, I'm gonna put back the Nintuko. Just like I might win this game. I, I'm gonna win this game in a lot of matchups just by time walking with Ranger Captain. I'm misremembering, or do I have a Blade of the Blood Chiefs deck with Eldrazi combo? I don't see it on Mox. You're you're misremembering. Uh, other streamers have, like Doomwake specifically, have been working on that one. I have I have not spent any time working on that, to be honest. Okay, Island Nile Spell Bomb is interesting. I think I want to get the Birthing Ritual going this turn. What's nice about this deck is you can there's you have a lot of good hits on the token. Basim. Yeah, I do think Basim is like probably pretty good too. I really I really need to start at some point. Oh, come on. I need I need I need to soon get into Mox preparation mode. They pitch consider. Mox preparation mode. Um And uh, like be practicing with Basim, be practicing with Woodlands, be practicing with Yogg, like work on Yogg maybe, maybe work on Gorios, all the decks I need to be considering. 
Uh, the the tournament is, I believe, one week from today. I looked it up. I looked it up this morning, but <laughs> maybe I've misread the site. But one week from today, so don't have the most time. What well, Basim list? I think the ring build of Basim was the best. Oh, dude, should I have foreseen this? I guess. How am I feeling about Yogg? Uh, I think that I, I'm feeling like there is room for growth with Yogg. Room potential. Potentially, uh, now is the time to be working on it, but there's a, it's a very hard deck to build. Do they consider Arwen for this list? I, I don't view Arwen as a modern playable card, but I could be wrong about that. So we have not only, I believe, four basic planes as outs here, but we also have... Four solitudes. Yeah, I mean, the main deck Nile Spell Bomb is they could be better against Flage, I'm assuming. With this Prayer Dane, they put two cards on the bottom. Every draw step, we got eight outs, although there's a good chance the Solitude could get countered. Awesome pop pop. Yeah, I think the Hollow One deck's good. That That's also a deck we need to be considering for the mocks. Oops. Okay. Taking three. Solitude. Basic Planes. Your turn. Did I pop Ranger before Solitude? Yeah, I guess we would if we still had it. Painful game. I think I must want to see Spike build a sword and all. I've worked on it a little bit, not to really any success. One more draw step. Now it has to be Solitude, right? Taking five down to three, so yeah. Just one of these creatures is not good enough. I bet we draw the basic planes. Could have, could have played around the main deck Harbinger. My fault. As far as sideboarding in this matchup goes... Don't really want these White Orchid Phantoms, although they, they do let me get my own basics out of the deck a bit more aggressively, which is kind of interesting. Sanctifier. It's nice that Sanctifier is, like, kind of hexproof against them. But the Exile Clause is not super-duper relevant. I guess they, like, can block Frog pretty well. All right, we'll play Sanctifier over in White Orchid Phantom. Because, like, they're going to have a little bit of a harder time flying the Frog with uh, Sanctifier in play. Sun Cleanser is good versus Frog and Murktide. Um, I kind of I don't know that it's good against Frog and Murktide. I think it has some text against them. But I don't love bringing it in against the Fatal Push deck. I, I I could I could see maybe a split being better. It definitely has some text. They still get to like fly the Frog and draw cards though against the Sun Cleanser. I think we had good reason to not play around Harbinger because we had the Flagstones plus Switch Enchanter already. So we needed a green and the Basic Forest wouldn't have helped. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is the Wizard deck better or worse after the bans? Not really sure. Because, like, to some extent, like, you had, like, kind of an okay Nadu matchup because you were a Flame of Anor deck. But it probably doesn't change a lot. I guess Cleanser does kill Orc Armies. Yeah, but the Orc Armies are going to be pretty small because we don't draw any cards. I, I think it's kind of interesting. I appreciate the feedback. I think I'm just going to play Sanctifiers instead, but you could be right about the uh, the option there. Got some basics in this hand, although I wouldn't be surprised if they had just already boarded out there. Harbingers. My sideboard was three Pyroclasm, three Thoughtseize, one Meltdown, one Spear, four Charm, all three Surgical. Seems pretty reasonable. No two drop isn't ideal, but what are you going to do? 
Got a lot of two drops in the deck. So to keep this on top, so this turn I can go Ranger Captain. I want to play Ranger Captain pre-combat. So that if my opponent counters this, I can attack with the guide. But I can't really attack at the two open mana because of Bowmaster right now. So now they go counter. The next turn we can double spell. Right, they did leave in the Harbingers. We have basics this time though. When I get planes. Well, I already have two basics in play. On the draw against this kind of deck, I would not be surprised if my opponent boarded out the Harbingers. So yes, we could have got planes, but the Surveil is like pretty valuable too. And we're not nearly as weak to the Harbinger this time. It's a good draw. Force of Negation. I guess I should have held that, actually. The battle against another Force of Negation. I'm okay playing around it. I'm going to do it this way, too, so that um, I can jump the Ocelot Pride with Guide of Souls next turn, potentially. Yeah, I shouldn't have played the Witch Enchanter. First strike first. Oh, sure. I mean, my minus one life, but not going to be so different overall. Wait, it's not a creature spell. You can get all bestows. Yeah, when you bestow, it's an enchantment spell. My opponent puts two cards on top with Preordain, which is not ideal. So, I think I kind of like the idea of maybe forcing their hand by targeting the Ocelot Pride. This means if they have a removal spell for the Pride, they're going to use it now. Which means I can uh, Guide of Souls target something else. Do you like modern right now? Am I enjoying the format more or less than post MH3 release week? <laughs> I've enjoyed modern this entire time, I think. Nadu's been pretty annoying, but I'm having a good time. I like that Nadu and Grief were gone. I think I would have preferred more consistent BNR uh, structure or whatever, but overall, I'm happy, yeah. A lot of good top decks here. Can do some work with this. So if I attack with my cat, my opponent can fly the frog and then discard two cards here. Why not Nintuko pre-combat and also attack with guide? Um, if my opponent has more interaction, I want that. I, I, I don't want to put counters on the guide, I think. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess getting into extra damage. Maybe that was better. They only have blue mana up to them. Yeah, maybe that was better. That's why I have a ban list at all. Great question. Let's let's talk about it. <laughs> so, I mean, to to curate a competitive environment, it is important that you uh, maintain the integrity. So, if I play this, I just I get the jump through a counter spell. So, I think I do that. Bandlists are important to maintain the <laughs> the balance of competitive formats. Kind of simply put.
why not restrict like vintage? Well, the whole idea of vintage is that it's a format where you can play every card. Now, if you had cards unrestricted, it would be really, really, you know, unbalanced. Right. I think this is going to get countered, unfortunately. But it, I think it's better this way. I think I think restricting adds a lot of variance, too much variance in general. Any plans to revisit the Amulet Golo stack? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I, want, I still want to kind of update that with um, the Worn Power Stone. Modek with the 34 months. Hope you're doing well today. Appreciate you. Don't know if we have outs here. Got another frog. One to one. Uh, no, I don't even know what multi duplication does, but I guess I would read it if you typed it in the chat. Let's go to Mulligan. This hand four landers, kind of, kind of high. Let's try this one. Oh, whoops. Okay, two mana. Create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to other types. It gains haste. Sack at the beginning of next end step. It would be really nice if you could go turn one cat, turn two, cast this, and then get City's Blessing and keep the token copies, but it seems probably too slow. And worse than Springheart and Antuko in general. So up against Through the Breach again. We do have four main deck White Orchid Phantoms. Seems like in the spot I'm going to be saving my fetch land to... Rallier Solitude is also pretty good against them too. A bit better if they threw the breach Emrakul instead of uh, Ulamog though. I'd like to draw one drop here. That counts. Definitely counts. Might just use it to ramp. Why no a Johnny? This looks perfect in a blink sex show. Uh, you could play a Johnny. I think White Orchid Phantom is just kind of a more important two drop, simply. Uh, but you could play a Johnny here. I haven't really missed it, but I, I agree it's it's playable. Okay, just a Michael Spawn. Maybe getting red mana for Through the Breach? No, just getting an Eldrazi Temple. Especially having Eternal Witnesses in our deck. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and Cash in the Ephemerate as a... I can't think of an example of a double rampant growth, but... <laughs> double rampant growth here. And then... Surveilling is kind of weird. I guess if I see a card I really want, I could just not rebound the Ephemerate. So I'm going to go ahead and surveil my upkeep again. Outramping the Eldrazi deck? Question mark. <laughs> surveil another flagstones into the yard. Okay. I guess I should have got flagstones instead of heath on the rebounds. It's kind of the same, but it's like less painful. Out of surveillance. With about dry arbor, let's go with a couple things. I hate dry arbor so much. Uh, I have thought about it. Yeah. All is dust. All is dust. 
Stirrings afterwards. Maybe checking for reprieve first. They reveal Kozlex Return, which is a pretty good card against us, but they don't have red mana necessarily either. This maybe goes a bit two shields down for Through the Breach, but I'm going to go ahead and done. Cast the Solitude. You know, one of our opponent's cards is Kozlex Return. If they also happen to have um, Through the Breach and Red Source and I guess they have the Emrick over here. As some of the other ones, you know, good beats. I can even, I could actually maybe, I, I was thinking I was just going to slam this Ranger Captain, and I probably still am. But White Orchid Phantom on this Ugin's Lab to stop, like, top deck through the breach does sound kind of nice. Let's do, let's do that. We also maybe will be able to run them out of basics, which is kind of a big part of this matchup anyways. Did they, did they put that force into play just now, or did they already have it? I think they failed to find... Just now? Okay. Yeah, I couldn't really tell. And then red mana? Yeah, I, there's a good chance they're not playing basic mountain, but... Um, I'm also not, not that worried about it, I guess. So the hand is Kozlex Return, a mystery card at the moment. They found Forest. Okay, cool. Yeah, I couldn't tell. So then they have no red mana available. And this is obviously a really nice top deck. Yeah, I don't want to commit too much into the K return if I don't have to. So I feel like I want to get Guide of Souls so that I can potentially get something out of the range of the Kozlex return. Can't you see in the game log? No, it doesn't. It doesn't say in the game log that they put something into play. I do wish that it did. Okay, not really such a problem. Might look like a problem. I don't think it is. Got okay, to 19 cards in my library. That should be plenty. Um, I will have to solitude this at some point. Could be, kind of any point. Yeah. So let's pick up the. Solitude now. I'm probably going to wait till I have a Guide of Souls in place so the Solitude can give me a Guide of Souls trigger. And it's Kozlek's Return Mystery card. The sack two permanents, right? Yeah. And they'll have to gain 22 life, which that's also a problem, of course. All right, so we're going to just return the Ephemerate, of course, of course, of course, of course. Draw for turn. I drew another Ephemerate. Oh, sorry, sorry. That was that. I did draw another Ephemerate. Okay, that, that, I said that <laughs> too early, but then it ended up being true. It was funny. Um, so why don't we go Ephemerate, return the Renegade Rallier. Then let's go after their basics here. And, and even if, even if like we lose this game or whatever... Just figuring out how many basics are in their deck is pretty important. Hoping it is only two. Looks like it is indeed only two. So I probably need one to sack Ranger Captain on their turn to... Stop them from playing Ring or another All is Dust. Or at least co not Kozlex Return. Also, notably, I only have to... If I sack it like this, I can sack the Solitude to the Ulamog. And they can see it. Nice. But you can just have to sack one land there. And we have the Birthing Ritual trigger. Pretty good. Pretty good. So going to game two. Oh, no. I didn't get the extra Teagues in the deck. <laughs> I meant to play four Teagues. Uh, it's okay. I'm going to play uh, Haywire Might also. Maybe should have a I think maybe should have a Might in the main also. Could play a Damping Sphere. Not sure that we need it. Also, we have Solitude, so maybe we don't need as much hate for 
for them. But I, I would I would like at least the third Teague. Teague is really nice. I'm gonna trim a Springheart Nantuko. I think I'm gonna trim a Renegade Rallier. Could maybe trim another Solitude. Seems really important to have. But I guess you don't want to draw two very often. Not sure about that. Look at trim one. Well, I'm not going to click the mulligan button. Wasn't sure exactly how we're sequencing this, but with that top deck, it seems kind of clear. Should keep it. Um, don't hate the fourth land. Yeah, my hand is pretty action packed. Let's just keep the fourth land, I guess. Might even be right for me to ramp with White Orchid Phantom. It kind of depends on what they reveal to the stirrings. They reveal Kozlek's return. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna ramp myself here. I could I could use this extra mana. I think we keep a cat. So I'm not exactly sure this turn if we're supposed to play play into the Kozlek's return or play around it by like blinking the mana. I think we play into it. Will I try Primal Prayers again? Yeah, I mean, so one thing is... I have a big tournament coming up in a week, the the box qualifier, and I need to I I need to be circling back to a lot of stuff. And it, it, this week, <clears throat> this, like starting tomorrow, I, I'm thinking there's a good chance I I need to be entering a, like a grinder arc a little bit, where I'm like I'm like playing multiple leagues of Gorios, multiple leagues of Woodlands, multiple leagues of um, Hollow on decks decks that I'm like seriously considering for the, the the qualifier next week pretty uh, it's a pro tour qualifier very big event you know um invite only tournament yeah i think hollow one's pretty dang good got a lot better post naughty ban okay so i kind of want them to just play a ring here so we can go might exile ring cat ephemerate cat nice One wish is all it takes. Okay. Then I'm not sure if I'm going to sack Ranger Captain. I probably will. It's kind of close. Well, then I lose the Ephemerate value. So maybe I do wait a turn. Also, am I going to have the Kitty's Blessing? I think I'm going to be one permanent short after the second trigger. Because this is eight. The next, oh, the, I'll have Kitty's Blessing off the second trigger. I mean, my opponent needs... They need double land plus all his dust to all his dust me. But it's also like... I, I'm just like... I'm just winning so much if I... I'm winning more, you might say. <laughs> if, if, I, if I just go Ranger Captain this turn, Ranger Captain next turn... It's going to be tough for them unless they have another Kozlex return or if they um, can like through the breach in response to a next turn. It's going to be tough. Am I going to slash allowed to stream to the box? I, I, I should be allowed to. I have in the, I have in the past. Um, I think I sh I think I should because, you know, I'm a streamer and it's good to create content as a content creator. Um, but I, I may end up recording it instead. But unlike streaming the 64 person drafts, um, I'm only hurting myself by streaming it, right? I think I think there's a good chance if I stream it though that I'll have the wrong deck. Like just I'll just lie about the deck and the title. Um, <laughs> I that's that's something I'm pretty seriously considering doing. Not on a delay, yeah, maybe delay, but. Honestly, like I, I think if you do hand hider, delay doesn't really matter. But what, what, what kind of does matter? Um, honestly, this draw was insane. 
Um, what kind of does matter is the is like the title and like the box field command. So I think I think I would just lie about it. Although if, if if people just watch it all, then they'll be able to figure it out. Okay, so because I have Teague, I don't really need to worry about sacking Ranger Captain. I guess yeah, even if they have Kozak's return, they did put four cards in the bottom. Also sideboarding, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. I'll do I'll do some thinking on it. Teague is Kozak's command proof. It's Kozak's sorry, Kozak's command, not Kozak's return. But thankfully they've only they've already played a Kozak's return. But I, I could also just sideboard off screen too. So I'll, I'll think about it some more. I haven't seen Teague in years. Yeah, Teague is like really, really good right now. <laughs> no ring, no all is dust, Kozlex, no Kozlex command, no through the breach. It, if they find another return, it's obviously game over. They hit Devourer of Destiny, one, two. Okay, so they can, they can hit Teague or Ranger Captain with that, but not both. Time to die to Devourer. I mean, I think I'm doing pretty good against Devourer. Because they'll hit the Teague and then I can upkeep Sack Ranger Captain. And maybe they have Through the Breach already. But I could maybe also beat Through the Breach at this point in the game. Go put Springheart on Teague to K return proof. Oh yeah, they, I guess that was the line actually. Next time. Do you run a one of Safekeeper? No, um, with Flagstones in the deck though, I, I don't hate the, the thought. Oh, sorry, I forgot about the return flashback. Okay, well, no, we are dead. You're right. Game three. Forgot about the flashback. Dude, return is so good against us. I guess I'm bringing in these flares. I think the witnesses are maybe a little slow. It is nice to like assemble Ranger Captain Ephemerate Witness. I mean, that, that, that is kind of a big part of the deck. Maybe we'll cut the Ralliers. Oh, right, we can't cast Flare with Teague in play. <laughs> Maybe that was a mistake. I would try to Hawk Flare, too many bad cards for slots. I haven't tried it. I mean, I, I Hawk is okay, but it's pretty slow. But if you have Sapphire Medallion, you're cooking. Sack Teague to Flare, does that work? Yeah, I agree that having me recorded would be good content. And I, I am trying to make a little bit more of a push on YouTube lately anyways, so we'll see. But I also get so bored recording tournaments all day. It is like genuinely miserable for me. You will live. All of my creatures are going to live. Imagine if my opponent just has uh, Labyrinth Kozlex return on their Moldify. They're feeling so good. Hit him with the White Flare. Okay, not this turn. Subscriber only stream. Honestly, that might be it. That might be the move. Tournament says subscriber only. Probably bad overall, but kind of an interesting thought. Maybe just for that one, though. I'll think about it some more. I'll just ask Dingo what he would do. <laughs> and then uh, blame my decision on him. I still were even beating <laughs> return here. I doesn't seem like bringing these flares was right. Maybe I'm misreading the schedule. Don't you have like two months of the mox turn me? Can you link that? Because I read it today and I read that it was like September fourth. Oh, sorry, yeah, September fourth. But um, I'm kind of dumb. I get really confused by the, <laughs> the the site all the time. So if I'm wrong, please let me know because I I was not really sure I read it correctly. Box on a Tuesday. It should be Wednesday. It's 
someone call an ambulance? But not for me. Not today, baby. <laughs> not today. I think it's Saturday, November 30th. All right, let's take a look. Exploitable. Mulligan this one lander, I guess. I guess I go bottom basic planes and then just play Lush Portico in turn one. Or oh, sorry, sorry, no. Bottom bottom Witch Enchanter play Flagstone in turn one. Because I, I, the thing is, I want to be able to draw into um, White Orchid Phantom and cast it next turn. And it's not like it's not like if I draw, being able to cast Nantuko on turn on turn two is that important, and it doesn't seem like it's that important to. Yeah, I think I think I'll go bottom with Shinchanter play Flagstones. Yeah, if I if I had to pick something right now, I play Woodland Combo. We'll definitely play that in like the Friday challenge today. Okay, while our opponent shows up, I'm gonna go use the restroom, real quick. But it might also not be that quick. Sorry about that. It's been a while since I. Uh... Uh, the chat in the middle of the stream. <laughs> Opponent kept seven, no companion, overgrown tomb. Tapped. We may be playing our own tap land this turn if we don't draw a white orchid phantom. Seems like we should still do that. Okay. Love to see that on top. Experiment with prowess using the energy package. Been having great success with it. I mean, I think that's somewhat a stock way to build prowess. The energy package. I haven't played it very much. One, because I'm kind of still burned out on prowess after our mini forays. Uh, <laughs> with the, uh, the archetype or whatever. They soul spike my guide of souls. Wanted to do this before attacking because of Bowmaster. Yeah, I do, I do. I do think that that those decks are viable. You know, as much as I've been uh, shit talking energy today, I do think one huge problem with that deck is that it has a poor energy matchup. Okay. All right, does my opponent have land necro? It's two lands to the soul spike. I don't think they're keeping seven without a necro that often with this, with these cards. Maybe they are. Maybe a ring. So if I play my land this turn, the next turn I can go bestow onto Eternal Witness. Copy Eternal Witness, get back Guide of Souls. So okay, bestow on Witness, play Winds of Teeth, copy. But I can't cast Guide of Souls and get the life gain trigger, which is a little bit annoying. I think I'm going to go ahead and play the planes. I think it's kind of close. And then let's attack with our insect token. Okay. Um, I mean, maybe they have another removal spell, but I guess I'm happy that they killed the pride and not the witness. Third Bowmaster would be bad. Oh, you know what? Sorry. I, I should have played the guide first because I, I did miss out. I forgot that the Springheart would still enter as a creature. That being said, you know, this is what a lot of games with Necro are like. You just like, you know, you have a, a curve of lands and spells, but you didn't draw a ring or a Necro and your deck is just kind of clunky. 
Not that we're like definitely gonna win or anything, but not feeling too bad about our spot. The graveyard. If I maybe if I had another lush portico, we could keep that on top. But also, if they kill my Nantuko, it's so bad. It's just bottom, I guess. I have so many good top decks. Black green to abrupt decay my Nantuko. So definitely glad that we put that on the bottom. Um, I think I'll double block here. It's kind of bad if I draw birthing ritual, I guess. Yeah, let's let, yeah, we would pressure opponent's life total. We've got we've got guide of souls in play. All right, save that for landfall. I think we'll just attack for two. Pass back. I think there might be a good enough build of Scapeshift Valak in the meta with the self mill, Seed of Hope Rumble, and Lumra. Um, I don't th think Lumra would be how you'd build that deck. I think if you you could play Aftermath Analyst, which is kind of a better return everything effects, but I'm not sure that that's how I would even build build it. Graveyard of Land, draw two lands, switch.tv slash aspiring spike. See Necro players keep a six or seven card hand with neither ring or necro so wild. Yeah, I mean it's I don't know, it's this is the thing about Necro, is it's, it's clunky, you have to mulligan a lot, you're very fragile if you like don't find your card draw effect, or if your card draw effect gets disrupted. It's kind of what I don't like about the archetype, but hard to say. Okay, we've finally drawn a spell, but not a very impactful spell. I think I'm still attacking. Especially now that they draw a removal spell for Guide of Souls, I can protect it. We have a ton of good top decks. Birthing Ritual, Ranger Captain, Solitude, Springheart Nantuko, Eternal Witness, uh, Renegade Rallier, Ocelot Pride, another Guide of Souls. Uh, basically every spell. I think Gorus could still be... A tier after grief. We played it yesterday. It seems still very playable. Yeah. We played a build with Thundertrap Trainer and Flare of Denial that I thought was pretty good, but um, I think there's a lot of ways you could build it. Okay, that was on my list of basically any spell. But maybe has a removal spell. I think we should just deck with the insects again. Maybe they drew a sweeper. Shuka with the five pack. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a good one today. Appreciate you. Glad you like the channel. Yeah, third bow master is a good guess. I agree. I think we're still blocking. Maybe the uh, plus one counter card. The MDFC. They would have to have something else too, because I just like. I mean, I'm going to try to cast Ephemerate. I like that they can't Fatal Push to kill this. I like that they can't Fell to Profane this. So there's not like a lot that we get really wrecked by or anything. Could maybe go after this to play around a second copy of the Revitalizing Repass, but they only have two more in the deck if they're playing four. So I think the upside of this working is pretty high. I think there's a good chance that this block just happens. Okay. I remember when we were first playing this deck, we had this matchup and... Uh, what is this? March? Oh, Meat Hook Massacre for one. Okay. Sure. We were playing this matchup, and we would just kind of regularly gain so much life that our opponents couldn't, like, kill us. It was kind of a weird, weird dynamic. Do you feel Jeskai energy is worth experimenting in a post naughty world? I, I do like Jeskai energy a lot. I think that it's very good against other energy variants, 
and like M- Mockingbird and Ranger Captain play super well together and lock some some gamers out of the game. Game one, I think you should play some Goblin Bombardments for sure. But yeah, I'm I'm a fan of that deck. Don't think it's good to sack Ranger Captain this turn, probably. What are you playing with Jessica vs. Boros? So you're splashing blue for Mockingbird. And, you know, I think I still like Ranger Captain and all the energy shells, but it's very, very good to just go Ranger Captain, Mockingbird, Mockingbird, your Ranger Captain, Mockingbird, your Ranger Captain. And you can, like, sack your Ranger Captain to, uh, sack your Ranger Captain to, like, time walk your opponents each time. Um,. But you, 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 you're, you're mostly just Boros Splash for Mockingbird, and then you can you can play Phantasmal Image too, which has been kind of nice for me, but it's not like mandatory or anything. Um, um, but yeah, it's that's that's mostly it. There's a few other options, I guess. So it's down to fourteen. Probably going to sack a ranger captain this time. Because it's kind of nice that this next big attack is going to mean that a top deck necro isn't even good for them. They do get to gain a life from the massacre, though. Can sign for the board is good for ring. Well, it's kind of awkward to play like counter spells with Raptor, but but yeah. That's pretty pretty uh, obnoxious or, or good, whatever. So this Renegade Rallyer can get me back. Guide of Souls, Springheart Nantuko, or Ocelot Pride after I do this. And it seems like the answer is just Guide of Souls. So if I sit in with all the casts, this is non-token, just any token they gain alive. Pretty interesting game. I think we have a, a lethal attack. Assuming they have nothing. So, okay, so let's say that they kill my Solitude in combat. I jump this Renegade Rallier. That's going to be five in the air, putting them down to eight. Um, and then they gain one more off the off the Meat Hook Massacre. So let's say they're at nine. And then they block here. And then, my, and then they take seven. They go to two. Uh, I think that outcome is probably good enough for me, especially because, you know, Solitude at least dodges push. Rally or dodges push too. So let's uh, let's get in. I guess I might as well leave this back though. So they don't have a removal spell, they're dead. Otherwise, I don't think that... I think one less point of damage is just fine to keep the pride alive. Now, they have been missing land drops. The hand should be three spells, although they have a, it could be discard spells. It could be sorcery speed non creatures. Looks like they have soul spike here. So they're empty handed again. Jump, but you wanted to jump the Ocelot Pride. I think that's kind of weak against some options, some stuff. I like I like that the Rallyer dodged Fatal Push. But maybe that was maybe it was better. I don't get to trigger the the Pride this turn. What did they pitch? They pitched another Revitalize in the past and a Bowmaster, I guess? <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm trying just knowing. I don't like the guide attack. Yeah, I guess it was bad. But 
Mistral Solitude. Mistral is Eternal Witness. Uh, I've also played this matchup before, and I think they have a hard time beating a Birthing Ritual. I do find the Solitude, though. Oh, sorry. I was think this was bad too. I should just main phase the solitude. Although I guess I'm playing around another shield a bit better, but I think it's just good to main phase the solitude and attack. I was thinking that my opponent would have to choose the number of cards drawn, and then I could solitude, and then they'd have to pay too much life. But um, obviously, that's not how it works. Okay, so now Eternal Witness is not the top deck anymore. Now, notably, my opponent has already used two soul spikes. And like I kind of mentioned before, this matchup is kind of weird. This matchup is kind of weird where I've 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 won it like several times just because my opponent I gain too much life and my opponent can't finish games. Now obviously you know things have changed about the format, but I I just wonder if that is going to be what happens here. Does the meta feel any healthier post ban? I mean, it's definitely healthier. I've, I've been enjoying things so far. It's you know, it's a new day. I'm trying not to overthink it too much and just trying to come into an understanding of things rather than feel like I need to form any sweeping opinions about anything yet. They discard seven. Yeah, I think I'm still just running to draw Birthing Ritual. Fun. I think I'm okay trading the Solitude here. It's bad, I suppose, on some things. I can see after Ritual, but I just kind of want to get gain the life and... Make the attack. I don't know. Maybe the option to like hit my like last witness and get back solitude hard cast it. Yeah. Not sure. Definitely kind of banking on finding a one drop here off the ritual. Okay, which we do. You know, again, like the way I played this matchup in the past, I just, I just draw the birthing ritual, or as soon if I can stick a birthing ritual, it's I, I just. Gain so much life that they can't close. It's been it's a very weird dynamic in the matchup. You need to keep an eye on the clock too. We're still in game one. Thirteen minutes versus twelve minutes. Although yeah, if, if this opponent being on abrupt decay is actually pretty relevant, huh? Is there where a bitter blossom can be useful card in injury shells? No, that card is completely unplayable. All right, let's just trade off, I guess. The fourth Bowmaster? Sure. Yeah, calling Ritual the Cyborg. I think I, I think this dynamic is changed a lot by the, the green splash compared to when we were playing this matchup in the past. It's weird how Necros popped up since the ban. I mean, it makes sense for people to try to still figure it out, you know. I'm not too surprised. Yeah, I do think we're kind of on defense here. So my opponent has two soul spikes in their deck left. Zero bowmasters. The you know, meat hook massacre. Get some draws. Yeah, 17 cards in the deck. Yeah, if we can draw Witness into either Solitude or Ritual, probably the Ritual first. Be pretty nice. Discarding two. A lot of good top decks. Or some, some good top decks, maybe not a lot. I'm down to 15.
It's weird. It feels like my opponent's been playing very fast, but they only have 10 minutes on their clock here. Not too often that you end up feeling like that. I think I'm happy enough to White Orchid Phantom the Overgrown Tomb here. Maybe cut them off of green. Maybe get a basic land count. Yeah, Stone Rain. I think I'm actually dead here. So they go kill the White Orchid Phantom, attack me for 5 down to 10. Then I'm dead to them drawing the entire rest of their deck and double soul spiking me. I lose to the Shieldred. The Meat Hook Massacre 2, 2. So now I'm not dead because they shrunk the Shieldred? Also, let me double check. So there's one soul spike here. There's one here. Yeah, it should still be two. Yeah, but now we get a draw step. Best breach deck in the meta. I mean, I like the green red shell that we played, but I haven't circled back to it in a while. But I would, I would probably circle back to that one if I was wanting to play some breach. I guess it's been a little while since we drew a land, but was optimistic that we'd be able to get something here. There's two in the yard. Oh, there is two in the yard. Sorry. Okay, so only one left in the deck. Which means... And no Bowmasters left. That actually means we get another draw step. Because they can only put me to one post-shielded trigger. The draw four... Well, pretty unlikely that this uh, Phantom either survives or that I'm able to gain life out of the Shieldred thing. But I'll, I'll at least yeah, I, I can find a witness and pick up the Solitude. Maybe a Marius Sky Ruin. I'm not the biggest fan of that card in general. So I didn't find the witness. Yeah, we're dead. Okay. Game two. A Mary of the Sky Rune is the kind of card that only ever gets suggested in games like this. You know what I mean? So Teague stops Ring and it stops Meat Hook Massacre. Gonna be a tough game. Game uh, games two and three. Oh, and Soul Spike, yeah. Yeah, I'll bring in the Teagues. Oh, and March. Okay, maybe Teagues is great. Not the biggest Sanctifier fan against them. I, I, I wanted to play four Teagues on my board, and then I just... I, I rented them, and then I didn't uh, put them in the deck. <laughs> yeah, no 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 one sees an opening hand. It's like, hey, Spike, what about playing Ameria in the stack? You know what I mean? <laughs> and no one's like, hmm, what about Ameria? Until until we play a game like that where it goes to, like, turn 15. Which they, and I think I think that playing these Witch Enchanters are better than playing Ameria. It's kind of the... the Short answer to that question. Okay, on the play. Click the keep button. Sanctifier could still be better than Fourth Orchid. I like the the Fourth Orchid like can ramp me and can also cut them off green. But yeah, it could be. Coco is like completely unplayable in modern. Birthing the yeah, birthing ritual is so much better than Coco, and you don't really want to play a ton of these kind of effects. Oh, speaking of Birthing Ritual, best card here. Yeah, I think Teague is a really good modern card. Which is not something I have said maybe ever. I don't know. Could not, definitely not in a long time. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to Ranger Captain for Haywire Might in this spot. Then we don't really need to sack the Ranger Captain. Thoughts on minus two White Orchid for Black Splash for two Nightmare. Nightmare seems like it'd be very good with Rally Witness Rituals, two win more. I think it's win more. I don't think you really need that kind of effect when you have... I think the, the Ritual kind of compensates. It makes your mana a lot worse. Also, I, I think the White Orchid Phantoms are really important to main deck at the moment. So we can hopefully Rally or that back. Kind of need to... Fetch land or flagstones here. Cause we'll this. 
All right, so we'll just go pride plus bestow. Yeah, Tika's mostly for Tron and through the breach also. What would you cut for ephemerate in this deck? It isn't good with solitude. Do you do you think I don't have ephemerate in the deck or something? <laughs> I have one in my hand right now. Okay, fell the profane, my ocelot pride. I think I'll just play my stumbling a little bit. Yeah, I don't really understand all these Graveyard Trespassers, but people seem to be liking them. I'm kind of getting three for one by it here. So that's, you know, a data point. Hope they don't have a uh, necro in their hand. We can. Be, I'm okay if they have a ring. I guess I should probably just sack then, man. And then guide this guide before pride. Monkey butlers with the 14 months. Hope that you're doing well today. Thank you for that. Instead of life gain self on the deck. That's fair. I mean, like, is the card quality of Trespasser just not very low? Because that's... For me, that's just kind of it. The card just isn't very good. But maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. Would not mind a land. Don't mind that either. So we have seven permanents. So not getting the kitty's blessing here. Hope to find a one drop to sack into maybe. Oh, no creatures at all. That's about shooting a colorless slash red Eldrazi aggro list. I've been working on it a little bit. I, I think that the, the five drop, the Eldrazi siege gang commander, that card is kind of good, I think. Um, kind of good. So, maybe keep an eye out. Okay. Cutting them off green is pretty good. Aldrazi Sage Game Commander. Yeah, I don't know what that card's called, but I think that card's kind of decent. Um, I've been wanting, I've been wanting to cast it, and it's like pretty good with, with Glaring Flesh Raker also. And I was even thinking you could maybe play Urza's Incubator in that kind of shell, like like the Eldrazi Siege Gang. You go Urza's Incubator, and then your Siege Gang Commander costs three, and it gives you three mana back, and your Flesh Raker costs one. And so, I think that that could be kind of interesting, but I haven't. I haven't like exactly figured it out, but it is on my radar. Why do they have green? They're splashing for like abrupt decay and like a few other cards, like culling ritual, birth birthing ritual. Sorry, wait, yeah, culling ritual. <laughs> this is birthing ritual. Okay, march my cat. It's okay. But cutting them off of abrupt decay and, and ritual here is very good, I think. Um, look at the cards. What do you think about the new, that new card, Fear of Missing Out? Uh, I don't know what Fear of Missing Out is. If you exclamation point uh, card FOMO, I guess I'll take a look. Putting reverse into Basim Shells. I, I'm open to playing the Basim Shells. I, I think that the ring build is pretty good. 
I would be most likely returning to it with uh, in that shell. So let's see if they. So if my opponent kills, okay, they just concede. I guess conceding for time with five minutes on the clock. Dustborn stuff. It's a new card. I, I haven't seen any of the new cards. Is your last list of the right one? I I would maybe cut the. I th I think I would still play the same seventy five. Honestly, I might play. I might cut the blister for a cookbook, but blister killing harbinger is probably more important. Okay, fear of missing out. Two mana enchantment creature nightmare two three. This is a new card that hasn't. I haven't seen this. I think. When it enters, discard a card, then draw a card. Delirium. When fear of missing out attacks for the first time each turn. If there are four more types of cards in graveyard, untap target creature. After the phase, there's another combat phase. Okay, that card seems incredible. This hand's very good if we find a land. We're on the draw with the surveil. Let's give it a keep. Okay, that that is a that's a modern playable card. Dude, you can also it's two mana and you can arena of glory it too. I'll go, I guess on turn two, you're probably not gonna be doing that super effectively. Yeah, I think Blurred Wizards is, is playable. I don't like Blue Red Murktide. Well, one more turn to draw land before I really, really, <laughs> really feeling it. Let's have Mono Blue Tron in the meta. Uh, I mean, that deck's still pretty bad. But you can play it. Trespasser, huh? All right, come on, land, please. Anticlimactic into a long match. Yeah, I like that it feels delirium too. Seems like it seems like it's got a lot of synergy. Probably, probably a very good hollow one card. Like, yeah, that, that card seems like it like just straight up, straight up replaces NT and hollow one potentially or. I don't know. I'm, I'm very, very open to playing that card. Not looking too likely. Yeah, the card is Fear of Missing Out. It is a two mana enchantment creature. Discard a card, draw a card on ETB that I think is a May. Wait, if you're if you're empty handed, do you go up a card? That also matters a lot. Enters discard a card. Then, so if you're empty handed, you go up a card, which is also crazy. Then whenever it attacks for the first time each turn, if you have delirium, you get to um. If you if you have delirium, you get to uh take an extra combat phase. That card seems actually ridiculous, and it's uh, works with Arena of Glory Phoenix. That card seems so good. Surprised no one else has like brought it up in the chat before. Not a May. That's that that is fair, yeah. That is fair. Although it doesn't matter too much. Okay, two and two. Uh my stomach is kind of upset, as you may have noticed at the beginning of this match. So I'm actually gonna call the stream a little bit early today so I can go take care of that. Uh back tomorrow. And then challenge on Friday. Tomorrow will be kind of a normal day. I think we're going to... I'm going to try to get to that Naya Phoenix deck I didn't get to today.